y'all welcome to another video from the dope librarian and today's video is super exciting for me because i'm going to be doing a two-part series on romance novels featuring black authors i am so excited um, to showcase some of my favorite uh romance authors and to also present to you some of my favorite romance books um like there are so many but these are just a couple of my favorites one of them that i'm featuring today is not one of my favorites i couldn't find that one but it's from the same series so i'm excited and these are best-selling authors i just want to be very clear um these are in fact best-selling authors and i love that and yeah so if you want to see more just keep on watching and if you have not already done so please like click subscribe share comment like let's talk down below in the comment section who is your favorite romance author white or black um yeah let's chit chat about different storylines and you know whatever i love it so yeah here we go and if you're wondering about my lighting I tried to, you know, give it like a very intimate feel, you know, like if you were at home on a romantic night by yourself or, you know what, I read, hey, read your book. So like when I was married, I would read my romance novels right next to my husband. I would set the, you know, set it up and read and just get lost in the love story of another character or of someone else. Like I loved it. So, uh, yeah, so I have my wine here. And this is a Shiraz uh, from Australia. And I am a wine club member um, at a place here in Kansas City. Um, yeah, and I have a little candle. So that's kind of why you see where the lighting is and all that and why I have on a robe. <laughs> I'm just trying to set the mood. So it's not because, like, the lights don't work. This is very intentional. Um, and as I get better, maybe I'll learn how to set the mood or lighting better. But this is just the best way that I can come up with. Um, and it seems to work. Like, I'm looking at myself. And it looks okay to me. But, you know, I wanted to make sure you all knew why it looks like this. First up, I'm going to highlight Lynn Emery. And this book is Gotta Get Next to You. And as you can see, <laughs> I have read this book a ton of times. And I've been reading this book since back in the days when I used to write on my cover. I used to put my name on here so that, you know, people can't claim it as theirs. Um, this book is truly falling apart. Um, this is, yeah, a really cool book. It's set in New Orleans. Most of Lynn Emery's, most if not all, of her books are set in New Orleans or the Louisiana area. Um, so this one is set right outside of New Orleans. And it's the character Andrea and Jamal. And yeah, it's super cute. He is there uh, pretending to work at the clinic she works at to investigate like pharmaceuticals that are going missing uh to also investigate all um insurance fraud she thinks he's just an employee the problem is she just started there so a lot of the issues that that came up uh came up prior to her start at the clinic so that makes a very interesting a relationship and development when she finds out who he is when he thinks that she may be um, implicated in this or know whether she's a part of it or not so that is super exciting so yes you have got to check this out or check out books that are by her I will also have um, like the books linked below and if not this exact book um, I have one of the books by the authors but this is one of my favorites from her, so I'm excited about it. Next author is Brenda Jackson, and this is from her series. Okay, this book is called Inseparable, and this is from her series, The Madeiras Family. She also has another series called the Westmoreland series, and that is, I mean, a ton of, like, 
really thin. You can read those in like two, three hours, you know. They're they're really small, but I love those also. And I'm actually I don't remember a lot about this one in particular. I just remember that she's living that the the female character starts to stay with the guy while her condo is getting fixed up like she does know him um he invites her to come stay while her condo is getting fixed and of course while they stayed while they are staying together their platonic platonic friendship uh develops into a lot more which is possible you know when you are living in close quarters with someone you, you know things happen things change you see them in different light uh i know people hate romance now was like oh it don't happen like that it's just impossible it can happen like that y'all it can and that's why i love it okay um it's beautiful and yeah like i love it of course he's like this hot bachelor um you know he's doing well for himself and so is she um, so yeah, it's really cute to see them go from being friends to a lot more than that. So, um, yeah, once again, this is from her series, uh, The Madaris Family, and she also has the Westmoreland series. So, um, I would really recommend just checking her out if you are looking for a new romance author. She's amazing. Okay, so I'm going to take a sip. Mm. And the candle I have burning back here is, I think it's Mahogany Teakwood from Bath and Body Works. Okay, so next up. So this is my second favorite romance uh, novelist. And I'm so sad uh, she passed away a couple years ago, so I would not get to read any more of her works, but what's beautiful about it is that even though she's passed on her work, her words, you know, pieces of herself um, are left behind for me, someone like me, uh, to still read. So I'm just going to, and I'm going to show you an example of that. So... I went back recently and I read um, her Grayson novels, like that whole kind of family set. And that, the first one, it was a toss up in terms of which book I would actually show for you all today, whether it was the one I'm going to show you or book number one in the Grayson series, because both of those were like my absolute favorites. And you know what, well, hold on, let me, I'm going to. I'm going to see if I can get to it easily. I'm going to show you. Uh, is it this? Yes. Okay. Now I have to, you know, try and get back all in place. Okay. So here's what I mean by the beauty of a story. You know, being here, words being here long after you. So... In the Grayson series, this is the first book in the Grayson series, but it does pick up from her previous series. Um, I thought this was actually like one of the early, early ones, but this book was written in 1999, and this one is the first in that series. Um, and she's this is a national best-selling author uh, book, and this was... I said, written in 1999, it was Until There Was You. So, the books before this, one of them was written in, like, 1985. I wasn't even born yet, and, and here it is that it's on my shelf, and I just finished rereading it for, like, the third time. Uh, so, that's the beauty of, uh, the beauty and the power of words, and I just love that. But here is my favorite, kind of going all over the place, but here is my favorite in that series. And I mean the entire series, like the Grayson, the Falcon, Talbert, 
and the friends of the Graysons, right? That's how many, all, all these books connect in some way. This one is my favorite, absolute favorite, absolute, absolute. And maybe I should do like a book review on some of my romance novels. Um, because unlike what people think, they are not all the same. It's not like you meet someone today and then by the end of the weekend, the book is over and they, you know, fall in love happily ever after within three days. No, good romance books, at least the ones that I like, happen to have like some level of suspense. Some authors do it much, much better than uh, than others, which is why this one is just my second favorite because there's someone who does it, in my opinion, a little bit better in terms of putting that element of like thriller suspense with the romance. But like I said, she does an amazing job here, so... And did I not say her name? I probably didn't. But the author is Frances Ray. This is her book, Only You. And I just love this book. So this book is featuring the female character. Her name is Sierra. The male character, his name is Luke. I'm sorry. No, Luke is her brother from the first book. I'm sorry. This book is featuring Blade. Blade and Haverone. And Sierra's a real estate agent, beautiful apparently, like, I mean, out of all the books, they've always just said how beautiful she is. She's the only girl um, in hers, from her siblings. She has four older brothers. Um, and of course, so like the family has a hard time letting her go and, you know, all that. Then she meets Blade, who is a billionaire um, real estate builder whatever he's looking for an agent who's going to sell out the resort i forget the exact name of like what's that called but that is like a real profession um someone will hire a seller for their vacation properties um and that's what sierra did and they ended up you know, of course, falling in love. I mean, don't you fall in love with billionaires every day? I mean, that's not so far-fetched. <laughs> Surely, I'm going to fall in love with a billionaire, too. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that that's this. But, once again, there is some suspense. At some point, Sierra gets kidnapped. And what makes that so significant is that Blade has been married before. And his first wife. Mm, blank, 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 blank. I'm not going to tell it all in case you want to go give this book a read. But just know that this has its own element of suspense. And it's so beautiful. I love it. Um, their love story is beautiful. I like how Sierra stands up for herself. Um, I like that she doesn't let the money get to her. She has her own money. Um, so she's not like impressed by that. Um, and that's what draws Blade to her. Now, this next book, final book that I'm going to show in this video, is my favorite author, period. Okay? Favorite author, period. I read this book right here when I was in the sixth grade. That was my intro. To, no, I'm sorry, the seventh grade. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was in the seventh and this was my intro into romance novels. And it's probably the reason why I have a very warped sense of how love is supposed to happen. Because once I started reading her books, I mean, the world of romance just opened up to me. And I've read just about every romance novel that I can get my hand on. So, um, okay, I'm going to show it to you. And this book is by the author... Rochelle Allers or Alliers and it is called No Compromise. This is actually my second copy. I don't know what happened to my first copy. I think I may have had to toss it in the trash. I read that book so many times like the pages everything were just gone like gone okay. No Compromise is maybe like the eighth or ninth book 
in the Hideaway series, okay? So this is a series. And this book was first published in 2002. So how old was I? I was born in, this book must have come out the, the year I read it because I was born mm -mm -mm, in the 80s. And I read it. yeah, this book came out when I was in seventh grade. So, uh, I was born in 1989 for all y'all who want to know. Um, yes, I'm a late 80s, but I'm still 80s, okay? And there are about 15 books in this series. The Hideaway series is amazing. Like, I implore you, okay? So, if you get nothing else from this beautiful collection of best-selling authors and romance, if you don't normally read romance books, take your time. Go on Amazon, get the Kindle version or get the paperback version. Go to Rochelle Owlers and get the Hideaway series. Like, from me to you, get it. You will love it. It will make a believer out of you. It will say, oh, okay, romance novels do have a lot more. This book, for real, could have, I mean, this book right here, y'all, it really could be like, a suspense novel. So the characters are Jolene, who is um, a woman who works at a domestic violence shelter. She's a director, executive director. And let me tell you how that's kind of cool because my first position as an attorney, I did domestic violence. That's what I wanted to do, um, even through law school. So I'm kind of like, oh, Jolene came with me. Um, and the male character is Michael Kirkland. He is a very intelligent guy, graduated from West Point. Um, he teaches at, you know, at the time he worked for the Pentagon. He took, he took a sabbatical from that for a very valid reason. You have to read it in here. And during his time away, um, he meets Jolene, uh, kind of comes to her rescue at a function. From there, they hit it off and comes to her rescue as in, we all have that where somebody can't take a hint and you're trying to be like, no, like, no, thank you. Somebody want to buy you a drink or whatever. You're just like, I just want to be left alone. And so, you know, you always looking for that person to come and be like, Hey, babe, you know, how are you? Like, you're like, oh, thank God. You know, you just hope he's not also crazy. Well, that's what happened here. Michael uh, rescued her. They um, were paired together for an event. Um, yeah, you just have to read it. And then, like, once again, she works at a domestic violence sh a shelter there in Washington, D.C., uh, so you can only imagine a particular patient shows up. And that just opens up a can of worms. And Michael's like, huh, not not to my baby, you not. Like, that's that's my future wife right there. He he kicks ass. He don't care who you are. You connected to the White House, the State House. He don't care. He's like, no, you're not messing with that one. Um, it's also in this book right here where... I ended up falling in love with my one of my favorite uh, love songs, True Companion by Mark Cohen. So that was featured here, and I've been loving it since seventh grade. Um, so, yeah. And, yeah, so basically, like I said, national best-selling author, Rochelle Allers. Um, you definitely want to go check her out, check out her books. Um, and, yeah, like, that's it. That's it for this. Um, I love these ladies. I love these books, as you can see. Um, they are, I don't know, I just love it. Oh, let me tell you one more thing. Sorry, sorry. Back up. In law school, um, I was, my first semester just having like a hard time. I mean, I was away. It was difficult. I wasn't happy. Our law school was one of the last law schools to do, um, we had like 17 credit hours as a 1L, okay? The next year, they changed their policies. But any, anywho, 
um, it was just kind of overwhelming and I had stopped reading, which uh, pr provides for me a lot of pleasure. Anyway, I emailed Rochelle Allers out. I was like, you know what? I'm going back to reading you. Even though I'm in law school, I don't have a lot of time, but I just know that it will give me motivation to keep going. And she responded. I was like, yeah, I wanted to cry. I was like, oh my God, she responded. And anyway, I did successfully complete law school. And I did start reading again during, I was like, I don't care what's happening. Like I'm going to be reading my own books. And that actually ended up um, helping me be a lot more successful come the second semester in law school. Like my grades just dramatically changed because I had relaxed, you know? But um, anyway, I just wanted to put that in there. If I can find the email, I will actually put that here because she responded and I was just so happy that this best-selling author took the time to even respond to my email. So I was happy about that. So yeah, uh, well, until the next time, I will see you all later and following up with part two of the romance series. And yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. let me know what your favorite romance book is. Um, if you don't read them, why not? If you do read them, oh yeah, let me know in the comment section below and I will see you all next time. Bye.